Good morning. Today we celebrate Easter Sunday of the Resurrection of the Lord. Our entrance hymn can be found in your hymnals number 249, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 249. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with with your spirit. God has so loved you personally that he gave his only Son, that you who believe in him may not die, but may have eternal life. And God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn us, but that the world might be saved through him. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. You can find this reading on page 477. 477. 
77. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power? He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not on what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, our Sunday, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw that the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb, but we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. The word tomb, T O M B, was mentioned seven times in this Gospel reading. And there's a child over there who's reminding me of another word that sounds like tomb like womb, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
womb and tomb. So, um, where, did, where did death come from? Seriously now, where did it come from? And the best I can do with it is to tell you that um, it was through the envy of the devil that sin entered into the world and with sin came death. That's what, that's what Revelation says. Uh, you, you might remember this, this um, famous dialogue in, in the Garden of Eden where the brightest creature next to God, uh, Lucifer, um, said to Adam and Eve, the first humans, um, did God, did God really say you are not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Did he really say that? And the woman answered the serpent and she said, God said that we may eat of all the trees of the garden, but but nevertheless of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You may not eat from it or even touch it, yet lest you shall most surely die. And then you know what happened. Um, Satan, Lucifer, the brightest creature next to God, said, no, you will not die. God knows, in fact, that on the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. So then the, the woman took some of whatever it was from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, gave some to her husband who was, who was with her, and the eyes of both of them were opened now look what open meant. The first thing they did was they, they, they covered themselves up genitally. A genital shame. First impact of sin in the world. And then what did they do next? They, they, they covered themselves up and, and then they tried to hide from God, it says, among the trees of the garden. And God said to him, Adam! Where are you? He knew where he was, but he was asking him, where are you at on the inside now? And Adam answered, and he, he says, um, I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. So fear and shame and hiding ourselves. And then watch what he did next. God said, who told you that you were naked? And he turned round and he said, it was the woman you put me with. Blame God. So that's what Revelation says, that through the envy of the devil, sin entered into the world, and with sin came death. And we are all children of Adam. Adam, the name Adam means made out of dirt. And then, God said to Adam, and he punished him, he punished him. He, he says to him, because you listened to the voice of your wife, a curse be the ground because of you. It will yield you brambles and thistles. And then he, he, he drove him out of paradise, whatever that means. And he said to him, uh, with sweat on your brow, you will earn your bread until you return to the soil. And then he said to him, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And so we, 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 show, up on, we show up on Ash Wednesday, and, and myself too, a big glob of black ashes on my forehead, and I was told to remember that I was dust, and to dust I shall return. So to the best of my understanding, uh, death, death was a gift to us from hell.
That's where it came from. Now, we ourselves, as you know, can go on to inflict death on other people. Uh, you can see up there, there's a picture of Cain and Abel, the first two priests. And Cain killed his brother Abel. And old, old Lucifer uh, was knocking at the door of Cain's heart and inspired him to commit murder. Okay, so that's, that's the best I can do with it. Where did death come from? Okay, now where did life come from? Eternal life in particular. And I can only point you now to Jesus, the new Adam. We, what do we say about him? We say um, that the Word took flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, we say things like, the Virgin Mary had a baby boy, and they say that his name was Jesus. And, and the name Jesus means God saves, is what it means. So, well, what's he going to save us from? Well, again, uh, he's going to save us from sin and death. And this, this new Adam, um, who is God in the flesh, could not have happened without the woman. The woman. Go back again for a moment to the beginning. God said to Lucifer, uh, the devil, because you have done this, because you have brought sin and death into the world, you know, accursed are you beyond all the animals. And then he said something that gives us hope. He said to Satan, I will make you enemies of each other, you and, here she is again, the woman. So who's the woman? Mary. She is the woman. Remember at the wedding feast of Cana, when, Jesus, when Mary approached uh, Jesus and said, they have no more wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what's this got to do? What's this got to do with me? My hour has not yet come. My hour to die on the cross, my hour to change wine into blood. It hasn't come yet, woman. But Mary is the woman promised in Genesis. She is the highest honor of our race. Through her, God took flesh. And then if you watch the first Adam and the second Adam, they, they parallel one another in, in opposite directions. Like the first Adam disobeyed God. The second Adam was obedient even unto death, death upon the cross. The first Adam covered himself up genitally. He was ashamed to be a man. Jesus was not ashamed to be a human. Not ashamed at all. He emptied himself of his equality with God and became a man. True God and true man. Adam blamed his wife. It was the woman you put me with. The second Adam cried out from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That cry of Jesus from the cross is still going down through the centuries. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Adam ran away from God. He hid from God among the trees of the garden. The second Adam, with his dying breath, cried out, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And Jesus passed behind the veil into the heavenly sanctuary, not with the blood of bulls and goats, but with his own blood. And, listen carefully, he will come again in glory soon to judge the living and the dead. But you know all that, that's why you're here. You, you just know it. Shortly before Jesus uh, ascended to where he came from, he said to all of us, uh, do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. I go to prepare a place for you. 
In my Father's house there are many mansions, the new Garden of Eden. In my Father's house there's many mansions. And then he says, I will come back again and I will take you to myself so that where I am you also may be. So we look to Jesus. Always look to Jesus. Now, I'm finishing with this. Um, when you were a child or maybe an adult, you were baptized. Now, what's baptism all about? Really, what's it all about? Well, baptism is about dying and rising. Okay, uh, like Jesus went down into the earth and rose again. He destroyed death, in other words. Well, when you were, were baptized, you went down into the baptismal waters, like you're dying, and then coming up, you're rising from the dead. So baptism then is an immersion in the dying and rising of Christ. That's what it's really about. So thanks be to God, we're all baptized into him. And we will rise. We will rise from the dead. We, in a few moments now, we'll renew our baptismal promises. That was the time when our parents uh, rejected Satan on our behalf and accepted Christ. One of our own here who is here today uh, was in Vietnam. Um, good many years ago now and it was dark it was the dark of night and it almost got deadly quiet in Vietnam when a, a bomb attack was about to happen and he was standing there with this great gun in his hands looking into the pitch blackness in the silence and he saw Jesus Christ in a vision rise up out of the ground and, and into heaven. So that's, that's our destiny as well. When, when Jesus comes back again in glory, the sea will give up its dead. All who are buried in the dust of the earth will rise. Those destroyed in 9-11 will rise up, all will rise up, and we shall be with the Lord unceasingly. Do you reject Satan I do. and all his works I do. and all his empty promises? I do. do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of the heavens and of the earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. That the Church may manifest the truth of Christ's triumph over death in tangible ways, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, risen from the dead, who bless our country, our parish and our families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the newly baptized and confirmed will find the church the joy and happiness for which their hearts long, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to be faithful in living our Catholic faith, especially through fidelity to Sunday Mass and the sacraments, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the light of the risen Christ 
may illuminate the minds of government leaders and enable them to protect the right of life of every human being. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni Sun Celi et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, Qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her 
throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis our Pope and John our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Celebrating the most sacred night of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we made, which we made to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On you stay, quis tollis peccata mundi, Miserere no hobis, 
Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tollis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pacha. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who with the will of the Father and work with the Holy Spirit, you dare give life to the world. Free me by this human's holy body and blood from all my sins and memory evil. Give me all his favor. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I say the word, and my soul shall be healed. <laughs> 